In this video, we will be talking about unit circle trigonometry. Before we get there, we need to recall a couple of things. The first is basic terminology in reference to an angle and its parts. There are two parts of an angle that we need to know. The first is the initial side, which is the original ray of an angle. And the second is the terminal side, which is that original ray rotated some number of degrees or some number of radians up or down. The next thing we need to recall are coterminal angles. Coterminal angles are angles that share the same initial and terminal sides. So this initial side and this terminal side are shared among coterminal angles. In order to obtain coterminal angles, you can either add or subtract 360, 360 degrees, or multiples of that, or you can add or subtract 2 pi or multiples of that. Next is what a radian actually is. A radian is a radius length along the arc of a circle, where there are pi times the radius length is one half the circle, and two pi times the radius length is one full circle. So one radian is one radius length on the outer edge of a circle. The next thing we need to recall is how to convert from radians to degrees and from degrees to radians. In order to convert from radians to degrees, we use our conversion unit 180 degrees divided by pi. So you take your radians and you multiply by 180 over pi and just do simple multiplication with fractions. It's almost the exact same for converting degrees to radians, except instead you are multiplying by pi over 180. The next two things that we need to know are just simple equations. The first is for arc length. The arc length is the length of an arc of a circle. And we can find that by multiplying our angle in radians times our radius. So arc length is equal to our angle times our radius. The next is the area of a sector of a circle. Again, it's just another simple equation where area is equal to one-half the radius squared times our angle, which again is in radians. So now let's get to the trig functions of a unit circle. Let's consider the circle on the right. This circle has a radius of 1 and so intersects the Cartesian plane and the circle predictably. So the circle will intersect our plane at these four points that we know. And if it's a radius of 1, we know that this point will be 1, 0. This point will be 0, 1. This will be negative 1, 0. And this will be 0, negative 1. If our radius is rotated theta radians around the unit circle, the terminal side will intercept the circle at some point x, y. So if we take our radius in green and rotate it, it will intercept the circle at different points. And each of these points will have some x value and some y value given some angle theta. Therefore, x and y are functions of theta. So if you input a theta, you will get an x or a y out. Those functions are the trig functions, which you might know in reference to right triangle trig. So in right triangle tr trig, you have SOHCAHTOA, which is sine is opposite over hypotenuse in reference to the lengths. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. Unit circle trig is actually a little bit simpler. In unit circle trig, these functions actually just point you to the x and y coordinates of all of these points. So the sine function in a unit circle will just give you the y-coordinate. 
the cosine will just give you the x coordinate and the tangent will give you the ratio of y to x. And then the reciprocal functions, so cosecant will just give you 1 over y, secant will give you 1 over x, and cotangent will give you x over y. That can also be looked at as 1 over sine, 1 over cosine, and 1 over tangent, respectively. So, if we were to rotate this radius somewhere else, say down here, And we know that that angle is some angle theta. We don't know exactly what it is, um, but we do know that it's some angle. All right. We know that this terminal side will intercept the circle at some point x, y. If we wanted to know the sine of theta, all we have to do is to look at this coordinate and that's our answer. So the sine of this theta is just y. If we were to ask the cosine of theta, we would do something very similar, except we would look to the x coordinate. So the output of this would just be x. So that is very, very basically what the trig functions of a unit circle do. They just point to the x coordinate or the y coordinate or a ratio of the two. Now, there are some important coordinates of important angles that we need to know. Um, and while this circle with all these lines might look a little bit overwhelming, all we're, we should really be focused on right now is everything from 0 to pi over 2. And the reason being is because everything in this first quadrant just repeats itself three different times. So right now, let's just go around the circle um, and fill out the angles, and then we'll fill out the coordinate points here in a second. So if we start we start at 0, 0 degrees, or 0 radians. Move up to blue. This will be 30 degrees, or pi over 6. Red will always be some variant of 45 degrees, or pi over 4. And green will be some variant of 60 degrees, or pi over 3. And then this top one is 90 or pi over 2. Now, green will always be some variation of pi over 3, red will always be some variation of pi over 4, and blue will always be some variation of pi over 6. So if we just move a little bit further, this green will be 2 pi over 3. or 120 degrees. Red will be 3 pi over 4, or 135 degrees. And then blue will be 150 degrees, or pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. And then if we move down to the left-hand quadrant, bottom left, um, blue will be 7 pi over 6, or 210. Red will be 5 pi over 4, or 225. Green will be 4 pi over 3. or 240 and we have 3 pi over 2 or 270 and then 5 pi over 3 7 pi over 4 And then 11 pi over 6, or 330. And then finally, 2 pi, or 360. 
Okay, and just if you go around, you should be able to notice that, again, red has a denominator of 4, green has a denominator of uh, 3, and blue has a denominator of 6. Okay, now, that's really the hard part of all this. Uh, the easier part is just knowing the coordinates. And these, we should at least memorize the first quadrant. Okay, so at this point, where pi over 6 intercepts the unit circle, this point is root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And from that point, we can get all the other blue points simply by determining where we are in the Cartesian plane. All right, so if we move to 150 degrees, um, this x is negative while the y is still positive. So this will be negative root three, negative root three over two, comma one half. Down here will be negative root three over two, comma negative one half. And then to the right, this will be root three over two, comma negative one half. For red, this is root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2. And again, all these other points are just variants of that. So 135 degrees is negative root 2 over 2, comma root 2 over 2, and so on and so forth. And then finally, green. Uh, this is actually just the reverse of the blue. Um, so this is 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And just like the others, uh, we can go around the circle and just really just determine where we are in reference to quadrants. Uh, so 2 pi over 3 will be negative 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Two forty will be negative one half, negative root three over two, and then five pi over three will be one half, negative root three over two. So all these coordinates, uh, they they repeat pretty predictably. Um, so again, if you know this first quadrant, if you know these angles and these coordinates very very well. Uh, you can get the rest of the coordinates around the unit circle. Now, like I said up above, the trig functions just point to the x or y coordinates of this unit circle. So for example, if I ask you to evaluate sine of pi over 6, we go to pi over 6, we find its y coordinate, which in this case is 1 half, and then that's our answer. For cosine of 240, you go over to 240 degrees, and because it's cosine, we're looking for the x-coordinate, and then that's our answer. So the cosine of 240, the x-coordinate of 240 degrees is negative 1 half. And then tangent is just a little bit trickier because we're taking a ratio. Tangent of 7 pi over 4, we go to 7 pi over 4 and we take the ratio of those two coordinates. So this is negative root 2 over 2 over root 2 over 2, which ends up just being negative 1. For cosecant of 2 pi over 3, um, cosecant is just 1 over sine. So we just take 1 over the y value. So this will be 1 over, and then you go to 2 pi over 3. The y coordinate is root 3 over 2. So we have 1 over root 3 over 2, which simplifies to just 2 over root 3. And then we need to rationalize that. 
So we get 2 root 3 over 3. And then similarly for secant, go to 210 and take 1 over the x value, which is just 1 over negative root 3 over 2, which will be very similar to up above. It'll just be negative 2 root 3 over 3. Again, when you are taking a trig function of a radian in terms of the unit circle, all you are doing is looking at the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate and then those those will majorly be your answers. Lastly we need to know that trig functions are periodic and what a periodic function is uh, is one in which there exists a real number c such that f of t plus c is just equal to f of t and what that means is that for us if we have if we start an angle let's say pi over 6 so we start and our angle intercepts the unit circle at pi over 6. If we add 2 pi to it, we just rotate once around and we end up right back where we started. That's what periodic means. So in this case, the number that we add to our function inside our function to make it repeat is just 2 pi. Okay. So if we have sine of 2 pi plus an angle, that's really just sine of the angle. If we have cosine of 2 pi plus an angle, that's really just cosine of the angle. So for example, if I ask you to evaluate sine of 13 pi over 6, we can actually rewrite this as sine of 2 pi plus pi over 6. 6 goes into 13 twice with pi over 6 left over, so we can rewrite it as this. And what this definition says that we can do is that we can just ignore this 2 pi so we have sine of pi over 6 which if we then look at our unit circle it's just the y coordinate at pi over 6 which is 1 half another example is cosine of negative 7 pi over 2 um, we can rewrite this as cosine of negative 4 pi plus pi over 2 and there's a lot of different ways to do this um, this is just the one that I saw first and what this definition says that we can do is we can just ignore this negative 4 pi because it's a multiple of 2 pi and rewrite it as cosine of pi over 2 and then this equals the x coordinate at 90 degrees which is just 0 so there are three major things we went over. The first is what a trig function of a unit circle actually is. Um, so sine points to the y-coordinate, cosine points to the x-coordinate, and then tangent points to the ratio of y to x. And then cosecant, secant, and cotangent are similar. We're just taking the reciprocals. Then we went over this gigantic thing. Um, but again, if we just simplify it to the first quad, uh, quadrant, uh, it's a lot simpler because it just repeats three different times. Then we went over how a trig function is periodic. And what that means is that there is some number that we can add to the inside of a trig function to make the function just repeat itself. All right. So again, if we start at something... Uh, like pi over 4. If we want to take the sine of pi over 4 plus 2 pi, well, we just wind back up right where we started. So it's just the same thing. It's just sine of pi over 4. Um, these three things, while one might seem very, very large, are just the basics of unit circle trig. Um, and that's all I have for this video.